So that's with what to prune, and then how to make a cut. Now there are um, two, essentially two types of cut. The standard cut that we do to remove a whole branch. And I think that's what we really do. That's the simple form of pruning. Occasionally, we'll look at shortening branches. But for most of us, on most of our trees, we're really looking at taking out excess branches, which means invariably taking the branch back to the trunk. That's the bulk of the, the cuts that will be done. And so there are two types of cut. One, where you, here's the branch, before cutting out, there's the trunk. If we want to remove that branch, there are two ways of doing it. Either cut it out so that we don't particularly want a branch to grow there anymore. We might deem that it's too low to the ground and uh, we want our tree to be jacked up slightly. Um, sorry, I've done that. I'll do another one, sorry. I'm not an artist. Slightly exaggerated. But we've removed that branch and we don't want another one to come and we've just left a little collar there that's slightly bigger than it would be normally just so that you can see but there's a ridge where every branch joins the trunk here there's a slight swelling just like there and the idea is to keep that little ridge intact so we would prune it just there so that it's not you don't want to cut it right into off so flush it's it makes a much bigger wound, that's the first thing, or even worse, I'll need my assistant a minute, oh, no, right. or even worse that it you gouge into the trunk, because that leaves an even larger surface wound, you all see that, we don't want that, because the idea is to get the, the tree to heal itself, and in that little branch bark, bark ridge as it's called, there are natural healing compounds that help the tree to heal. Similarly, we don't want this. <coughs> Just hacked off and a stump left sticking out. Because what will happen, it will either grow again, or if you cut it you know, just an inch or so out, it could even get an infection in it and die back into the trunk and start to do damage, particularly to a young tree. So that's the first type of cut. The other type is what's known as a Dutch cut. And we make those where we want, we possibly think we might benefit from a branch um, growing in the future. So with the Dutch cut, <coughs> There's our branch that's been removed. It was up here. And you can see what I've effectively left is a small triangle of wood, a sloping cut, touching the, the trunk at the top, but not necessarily nicking it, with a slope on it. And then the theory is that as the sap comes up the trunk in the spring, little dormant buds which are sat under there, those of you who do hedge laying will know that when you cut down and a pleacher, lay it down, a lot of shoots will come from around the base of the cut, and what you'll get from here are young shoots coming out, several of them probably, from around the base of that cut. <coughs> you do it sloping because that makes the rain run off. We also want to do a little sloping cut like that so we haven't got a vast exposed area to heal. <coughs> so we've taken a big, ugly, upright branch, and we've got three or four more horizontal branches, 45 degrees to 90 degrees, and we leave those for several years until they form fruit buds and start to come down. Then you can select out, take out the ones you don't want, and leave your new replacement branch to fill up the big gap in the tree that's been left. And you can leave, do these wedge-shaped uh, cuts wherever you want to. I think uh, it was... Um, an arboriculturalist who found out, discovered this, and they do it a lot in Holland. They're often called Dutch cuts or wedge cuts. <coughs> Very quickly then, a bit about spacing our branches and um,
types of tree that we've got. I think it's generally recognised now that most people want to grow centre leader trees, and certainly with cider apples we want to grow centre leader trees because they are far more efficient, they're easier to prune, they capture the light more easily, as John pointed out, that's the most important thing. But they, they, lead, they give you the opportunity to cut, take out branches every year, to prune every year, and give yourself a, a chance to get round the whole acreage. And it's much better, if you can, to do one or two quick cuts a tree than say, I'm only going to concentrate on this 10 acre field this year and then go on to the other one which I haven't touched for five years because you have to do so much work that the tree responds, you invariably do it in winter, the tree responds by throwing <coughs> masses and masses of growth. So we're, this is the, what are, the old fashioned, you don't see many of them now, perhaps in Kent, I'm not an artist as you can see, a goblet shaped tree where the sun pours in from the top, you've got four or five main branches, uh, they produce lots and lots of shoots, they throw vertical shoots off them because the sap's got nowhere to go from a big root system and every year you have to climb into that canopy, take out all the vertical shoots, shorten others so that, so that you get um, lots of renewed bud on the main frame which never really changes. The big problem with this is that A, it's an awful lot of work and if you lose one big branch, you've lost a quarter of your tree in one go, and the tree responds by going mad. But what we're trying to grow is lost it. Can I have a is an open centre tree? <clears throat> with branches coming out into light and air on a spiral pattern around the trunk. Largest branches at the bottom. They're not opposite one another. I can't draw it in 3D. And the trunk, although I haven't quite shown it there, should be gradually tapering, wider at the bottom, gradually tapering off nice and straight and thick all the way up, um, never taping very rapidly, but a gradual taper. And you'll get that if your branches come, are coming out in a spiral pattern, not opposite one another, not all close together, but nice.